Hey, one, two, one, two, one, two, check, one, two, check, check, one, two. Test. There you go. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Whoa, That's you. Oh my look at that. Fucking peeking. Fucking peeking like a motherfucker. That's the way I'm not. Now I now am. You're now you're recording. Oh, interesting. I can't record over the same track. That's interesting. Because it takes up the same You're space. Right. Space, 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 space. Go ahead. You're breathtaking. Thank you. <laughs> I dug some it's of Tim and Eric. Very funny to me. <laughs> there was a few, a few skits that they did that were well, felt like well, they were weird were, um... for the sake of being weird, not necessarily for being funny. But the weirdness is funny. It is, except it still has to be somewhat funny. It is funny. You didn't think it was funny? Some of them, no. Some of them, no. Some what of them one wasn't funny? Uh, you don't know. Yeah, the, the, I remember that. I remember a specific part in the movie where doesn't he take like a bath in chili or something like that? And it's, Isn't it like shit? Well, it's supposed to be shit, but yeah, that that. Okay, well, first of all, I don't think the movie is the height of their comedic genius. Okay. Um. I'm trying to remember a, a part of the show that I actually watched. See, it's forgettable. You see? Do you it's think, so weird do you think Better Call Saul would exist? Or Saul Goodman would exist without Tim and Eric? Absolutely. Do you? I think so. Do you? I think so. I, <laughs> I think so. Why? I forgot he was on Mr. Show, but... That was the only reason I knew anything about Bob Odenkirk was because Tim and Eric. I didn't watch Mr. Show. Mr. Show was amazing. Did you ever watch it after? Bits and pieces. God damn it. That's the kind of show you have to watch the whole episode to really get all the jokes. <laughs> Why? It's because there's it, it, like it's pretty much one big... It's constantly they're going back. Everything's a comeback to different parts of the show in the one episode. There's like one. I don't know. It's like a storyline almost. You've convinced me. I know. Now I'm gonna go <laughs> home done. and binge it. Done. Now you should. You absolutely for three should. days straight. Please watch Mr. Show. And no, I I don't think better better watch or better better call Saul would. Absolutely would have existed without Mr. and Mr. Um, uh, Tim and Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Heidecker and Eric Warheim. Although, speaking of which, I did, after oh, I saw Us. He's fantastic. And he's fantastic. Yet, at times, I, I can't take him seriously. Can't. Because the, the, the... He also just released an album. Do you know that? He sings? Yeah. He sings. He does a lot of like political stuff, but this latest album is like <laughs> he a does weird, a lot of political stuff, like sad kind of breakup album. It's actually pretty good. What's it called? It's like so, things broken hearted people do or something. Now does does he not work with um, Eric anymore? Because Eric's on that show with uh, Aziz. Aziz. Um, you know, I don't. I don't really know. I don't think they're like. What the Broken Hearted Do is the name of the album. But um, it's a good question, actually, because I don't really know. I haven't seen them do anything together in a while. I don't know what's up with that. I mean, that. when was the last time they toured? God, when was it? I could Google this. Should we Google it? I don't, yeah, please. I'll re-Google it. I don't, I don't feel like it's been that long, actually. But I did enjoy, I did enjoy Tim in Us. But it, it was definitely at a couple of points, and I think actually it was meant to be comedic. I think it was too, and so he was. It was meant to be funny, but still, it was. He was very good in it. Everyone was really good in that movie. I really dug that movie. Apparently, I they still have a show called Tim and Eric's Bedtime Stories, and they still do stuff recently together with it. Is that Adult Swim or something? I think so. Gotta be it's William Street. Yep. Oh, so this is I guess this is a wannabe podcast. Wannabe podcast? Yeah. I guess it's an experiment. Experiment? It's a, it's an experiment. What's the working title? I 
the wannabe podcast. Drunken so maybe I'll movie, put my name. Drunken Movie Discourse. That's actually pretty good. You should write that down. <laughs> I've got it written down in my head. In your head. <laughs> Perfect. Well, you've been doing it for a while. This is my first actual legit one, except the wannabe ones we did back legit in the day. Legit wannabe podcast. Write that one I down. like it. Actually, you know what? Actually, I'm going to put that in my, my Jot phone some right notes. Now. Why don't you pick up your $2.5,000 machine there and make a a note? <laughs> <laughs> I have my cell phone. I can do it on that. Oh, the Here are my notes machine. for tonight. And I made this about an hour before you got here. Talk about the movie Us. <laughs> which we kind of already did. Not really. Talk about the latest <laughs> Spider-Man movie. Which we haven't done. Which we have not done, which we will. And what future possible plans for the podcast, if, I mean, if you want to call it that. <clears throat> so I want to go back on this topic real quick of, like, funny things in horror movies. Do you think... Because you were like, briefly talking about Child's Play and how there was a scene that was so ridiculous and ludicrous yes. that it was hilarious. It was amazing. And there's I've, a lot of other there's a lot of other scenes in that and Did you ever see Hereditary? Yes. I Do love you that. I think movie. parts of that movie were funny. They were they were a few parts that I thought were funny. But not necessar I don't necessarily think it was meant to be funny. Really? Yeah, that movie is a downer, dude. Dude, that movie's a huge downer. I don't know. I I almost think a lot of some of that's intentional because it's so ridiculous. I wouldn't. Am- I mean, something like from even us and uh, Child's Play. Child's Play was funny because I think the it's stuff meant from, to the be. The stuff from us is it has to be intentionally. Oh yeah, right. absolutely. But not. I wouldn't say hereditary because that. I don't know. That movie I, is. <laughs> I did, not enough from that director. I I it's, saw Midsummer. I wanted to see that with you. You were supposed to get back to me, and you didn't. <laughs> and I've been waiting to I see that. S- I saw it on a whim um, by myself. I'm dying to see that. But, uh, that doesn't seem like the kind of movie you'd want to go to the theater and see That by movie, yourself. some of the shit in it is so over-the-top ludicrous. I was laughing out loud. It had to be intentional. There's no way. I heard. I, I don't. I have not. I mean, I've, the only thing I know, the premise is a bunch of kids go to this. Uh, they think it's a... Uh, like a Coachella type getaway for kids to do drugs no. and stuff like that. It's not. They don't think that. It's like this community that uh, it's a group of college kids, and they have one of the p- members of their group comes from this community in Sweden. That's like really they just kind of like live out in the mountains by themselves, and they have their own little like commune. Hmm. And that every I think it's like every seven years they do like this festival thing together called Midsummer in the middle of the summer. And he's bringing his classmates with him to experience this. Okay, event. So I think I'm just going by the trailer. The trailer makes it seem like they're the, the, oh, we're the gonna trailer. Go. Yeah, it definitely I, gives it like oh, we're gonna go for spring break and go experience hallucinations and drugs. They, I mean, I mean, they do do drugs, and there's some interesting visual effects, but that's not. It's not like a a festival that the, all the public's going to or anything. This is a very much like a a weird secluded commune thing. The only thing I heard about it that it does make it seem like, and this is just here, so this is what I've heard gossip about it, I don't know very much, is that men are kind of made to be like idiots and assholes. Now, this is coming from somebody who has not seen the movie to another person who has seen the movie. I wouldn't say... I mean, there are asshole men in the film, but... I don't know. I don't know. At no point was it like, man, all these men are assholes. I don't think that was their, what they were going for. Right. It was just kind of... Because there's very... I don't want to say too much. There's very villainous women, too. There's okay. vil- every everyone... It's not like Lars Van Trier movies where it's like... No. Women are horrible. No, it's not like <laughs> the that. Women are horrible. Okay. It's, it's just, not anti It's just very much like... This group of people is commune, what they believe in. And, I mean, they the men may be out to be assholes, because as far as main characters, there's only one woman. The rest of them are men. So maybe in that way it kind of unbalances it. But I don't think that was really a point that they were going in for to try to make. So since you saw Hereditary, 
and you saw this one, how... I mean, are there any... Without, like, giving away any plot, but are there any themes that kind of... This, like, similar to it? Similar or? themes? Well, I mean, like, because I mean, Hereditary, it's, it's, it's pretty graphic scenes in that movie. Yeah. There's graphic scenes in Midsommar, too. Okay. That's what There's I one right. actually thing I actually uh, I read about, but I... I won't spoil it for you. So Don't spoil it. I'm not gonna say it. But there's uh something that happens in Hereditary that also happens in Midsummer that is apparently like purposely done. And I mean Midsummer is a a huge downer as well in a lot of ways. Is it more than a, a more of a downer than than Hereditary? So, and this kind of goes back to my point. Hereditary, I think, was I feel like Hereditary deals with a lot of family family, family type issues. issues. Yeah, and Midsummer does in its own way. So yeah, family issues are definitely still a thing. That's a theme. <laughs> um but yeah, Hereditary was more like 100% downer. Midsummer is yeah. definitely a downer. And I don't want to say this, but some of the shit that happens in Midsummer is so fucking ludicrously over the top. Like at the end of the movie, the last like shots, I was fucking laughing my ass off. I saw <laughs> I I saw a post of somebody who took screenshots of the movie and it's just without really knowing hardly anything about the movie because I tried not to know much especially about those like those kind of movies like hereditary and stuff that I try not to find out anything but the screenshots were like how the fuck does all this take place it's only four screenshots and they're so out of place it's like how did this how is this all from one movie is it that far out there that it's I mean I have to see the screenshots to give uh, let me see. I, I don't want to give too much well, I mean I can't give anything away but there's like a regular a shot of a person sitting there and then there's like an animated shot of a cartoon and there's another shot of like an animal and there's another Which shot animal? I'm curious where this is going. Okay, I think, so I think it's a bear. But that's in the trailer. <laughs> that's they they see the bear in the trailer. Yeah, like all I'm gonna say is when you do see Midsummer, um, pay attention because there's a lot of um, drawings everywhere in the film. Right. And pay attention to these drawings because they all foreshadow shit. And when I see it again, I'm gonna pay a lot more attention to these drawings and what they're. Do you want to see it again? Oh, 100 percent. Okay, then I want to see it. I really want to. I I kept that day clear so I could see it with you. But it's okay. It's I mean, right. I didn't go on that day. I went like two days later. But no worries. Um, I like I've been. I was really kind of hoping to see it before this, so that we can talk about it. But that's okay. We can do. I, I definitely want to see it. I have to see it before. Spoiler cast. Spoiler cast. <laughs> But it's good. It's worth seeing. Now, is it one oh, of those yeah. movies that... It's probably one of my favorite movies I've seen this year. Wow. I mean, I haven't been super duper Well, this year impressed. hasn't been, like, crazy aside from the Marvel movies. It yeah, besides the Marvel... I don't... I can't think of anything I've really seen besides the Marvel movies I've, like, enjoyed And I didn't... I, I loved Us, but I didn't see that in the theater, unfortunately. I mean, Us was good. I really liked the Us. The Child's Play. I did like... Godzilla was really good. I, I liked John Godzilla. Wick. I didn't see Godzilla. Godzilla was surprisingly good. I wanted to. I need to see that in theaters. It seems like a that's a movie definitely I need a movie to see you want theaters. to see in theaters, especially for the sound because it's <laughs> it sounds amazing. Um, but yeah, I definitely. Did you enjoy Midsummer more than Hereditary? Because mm. I, I, I know I know because somebody... I fucking loved Hereditary. Hereditary I also, was amazing. I fucking loved Midsummer too. Midsummer is definitely like it's a fucking slow burn. So be, you know what, be people ready say that. that, because I know people who did not like Hereditary, and they're like, oh, it was so slow. I've, I've, I've heard that felt, too, but I didn't feel it either. I didn't feel slow at all. I, that yeah. felt nonstop tense. I mean, tense doesn't necessarily translate to slow. True. Like, that, like the, the beginning of that movie just feels like it's just a bomb waiting to go off. You're just, you're on the, <laughs> like, you're like, god damn, there is so much shit that's going to blow up in this movie. One thing I liked about Hereditary is when, um... When the daughter gets... Spoilers, please. Spoiler. All right. 
Spoilers for Hereditary. Spoilers for Hereditary, even though it's been out for a while. When the daughter gets her head knocked off. Cat, yeah. Like, I, I, I gasped. Can I tell you this? <laughs> In the theater. I, I was, was sitting like, here. Holy I fuck. I was sitting here watching it. I was having a drink. And though I'm, I'm like, I'm literally already on the edge of my seat. And from what I read, it's like, oh, this movie isn't one of those bloody movies. It, 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 it's, it's just a really psychological thriller type where it fucks with your mind. I'm like, okay. But when that happened, and the way it was shot, I <laughs> literally jumped up and I, and I put my hand on my, oh, shit. Yeah. I literally, I was sitting right here, right where I am. And I, oh, oh shit. That was a good theater. And I had to actually too. pause it. For a second to be like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, that was... Yeah, that was a a really good theater moment. Like, everyone in my theater was like, blew up. up. And you know what's (laughs) funny is that, if you look at the poster, it's... It's just like the family shot of them, right? No, no, it's it's a shot of... Well, at least on the DVD or the Blu-ray, it's a shot of the mother. And then right underneath her is the little girl's head. Oh, and then yeah, there's a, yeah. there is there is like yeah. a table, and then you see the the little um, the the dead bird mm-hmm. thing that she had. And then when you if you watch the movie and look at that cover now, you're like, oh, it's her de- decapitated head. It's like shit. <laughs> it makes more way more sense now. It that movie was, and then with the ending. And the last, Jesus, like the last 20 minutes of it is just... Nuts. Yeah. Nuts. Like, Midsummer doesn't have, like... And maybe, like, going into it after seeing Hereditary, I was kind of expecting, like, wacky, crazy shit to happen, so... Maybe it couldn't have happened, but to me, Midsummer didn't have, like, that oh shit moment. It was just kind of, like, a very even keel, like... Oh, shit, oh, shit, it, oh, yeah. shit, oh, yeah. shit, oh, shit, yeah. There was no, like, something that hit you in the face. That's how it felt, <laughs> when, like, that's how Hereditary was. Oh, there was one other part in Hereditary that made me jump was when uh, she jumped out of the shadows and she was in the... They did a, that, The lighting in that movie and the cinematography was really good in Hereditary. Mm-hmm. But when she's, uh, the mother jumps out when she's possessed and she jumps out of the shadows and runs after him, that's another... <laughs> part of the movie that made me jump. I was like, God damn it. So yeah, mid- and also Midsummer is not like... I don't really think it's... It's not like a horror movie. There's no... It's unsettling for sure, but I wouldn't say it's ever trying to be like scary. It feels like a... Um, on the outside of it, after like not knowing anything about the movie, but it feels like a PSA for anti-drugs. It's like, this is what happens if you do drugs... I mean, they're drugs. I mean, the I would. Uh, or I would do... definitely say that's an interesting way to take the film. That's the point. Well, I mean, there's only a few little parts in the the trailer. Makes it seem like it's not necessarily spring break, but it's a bunch of college kids going off to enjoy this big crazy festival with drugs and trip the whole time. It's definitely not that. Interesting. There's yeah, there's drugs involved, but not. It's more elusive than just like we're taking drugs and getting fucked up all the time. That's the total. That, that's what I got from it. And, like it's party. And there's no. It's definitely not that. <laughs> like most of the people in the film, there's there's the the main characters. There's one other small group of main characters. Everyone else lives in this commune. It's not like a huge group of people going. It's just like four kids, three or four kids. Maybe five or six. Yeah, we got to see it. I definitely want to see it. Hereditary was one of the best movies I saw in a very, very long time. I haven't watched... I I wouldn't even... Well, I guess I would call it a horror movie because it's pretty graphic in certain scenes. I'd call Hereditary a horror movie. I think it qualifies. Especially at the end. Yeah. Like... (laughs) Oh, yeah. Jesus. I think it qualifies. Um, I've never seen so many naked white people. In, in a movie. <laughs> oh god, you need to see fucking Midsummer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> More oh, naked white shit. people. There's not enough a group of naked white people in movies. There's just not. There's not enough. It's about time. <sighs> Speaking of naked people and dicks in general, you see uh you watch Euphoria? No, but I'm hearing so much stuff about Dude, it. Dude, it's so good. 
and man, there's a lot of dicks in it. <laughs> like I was not like not expecting it. Suddenly it's like dicks, dicks, dicks. Like damn, there's a lot of dicks in the fucking I was show. I was on a Pornhub the other day, <laughs> and <laughs> I go on. You know, I'm, I normally go on Pornhub looking for porn, and the first the first category like when you open it up i usually watch it on my phone and when you open it up it's like oh these are the the popular hot porn videos mm-hmm. and like the third one was a scene from from that show euphoria euphoria a guy walking through a locker room and all these guys are yelling at him i didn't watch it i wish i could i this wish is i from would the have. second episode and it's just exactly like dick this. swinging yeah <laughs> yeah but did did you hear like the little monologue he's talking about? No, I didn't watch. Actually, well, I didn't watch. Funny, because the we're we're sitting in front of a TV that has Netflix on and it's showing like all these weird Netflix ads. The yeah. dude in that video is in that kissing booth movie. That's that same guy, <laughs> and I've, he's like on your, he was on your TV. Oh yeah, because we have Netflix on, and it's just if you leave it alone, it just does like a slideshow, I guess, of different shows that they want you to watch. Like Agretsuko. Which I don't know what it is. Some, some... All I know is she is has hell, anxiety or like something. It looks like hell is opening up behind and her. And she sings death metal songs. See, that's her. She's like blurring into a mic, I guess. That's no. the hell thing. She this sings this death is more metal. visual for, for the listeners. Whatever. I, yeah. I always, I'm a fan. Okay, here's the thing. Podcast. I'm a fan of meta stuff. No, and, it, and it's so and much. Some people aren't. And like a lot of some people I podcast with before, they're always like weird about it. Like... I don't know. Who gives a shit, really? No, but I don't. I don't. I think the shit. meta stuff's fun. I think it's great. So you, but you want to get to know these people. We do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want you to know me that well, but I know you pretty well. I feel uh, like I do. Should. How long have we know each other? Like, <sighs> let's see. Um, Fifteen years? No, give no, take. no. Okay, because we start. We met each other at GameStop. And. I think you were. What year there. was game, was GameStop? I don't remember. Oh, like two thousand seven. Uh, yeah, because I got out of college like around so two thousand five, two thousand six, and the only job I could get after college with a degree. GameStop <laughs> was GameStop. It was either GameStop or. Um, that was like in the golden age of GameStop too. Oh, what is that place called? The not Blockbuster, but the other Game Cave, Game Freak, Game Cave. That that's a good name. Write that down. But game there's cave. another place. <laughs> Well, there was another place that rented DVDs, and they're only those are the only places that called me back. Hollywood Video. Hollywood Video, that was it. But I decided to go with uh, GameStop, which is good because I made so much money off of GameStop good with uh, all the st- illegal activities and stuff. Oh yeah, all the illegal activities, the games that I stole, uh, <laughs> the game, the guy that came in and he was like, "I got like three Super Nintendos and." All these classic Super NES games in the box. You got, you in, trouble. You got in trouble for buying those, didn't you? I did get in trouble, but I gives a shit. made my money back like four times with that. He opened his... He op- I'll never forget it. <laughs> I said, unfortunately, we don't take these things, but I will buy these from you. And then our boss, who will remain nameless, I guess, because he's still there. He's Is still he? there. He's pretty famous. We well, can say his first there. name. I love his first. I love... He's the best Scott I know. <laughs> his name is Scott. That's not true. I know a better Scott. And he came over He's a pretty he... shitty Scott, but... He's well, I mean, this guy, I, I kind of felt bad for him because he was... God, that guy. <laughs> he would open up to me. It was really fucking annoying. But he came over and he's like, oh, we can't, uh, we can't buy these and you can't buy them. You're not allowed to. I said, okay. Um, I'm going to take my lunch. <laughs> and... And I told the guy, I'll meet, you in the, I'll meet you in the parking lot. And I went to the ATM, and I took out 50 bucks. And he opened his trunk, and it was a Dreamcast, uh, a Super Nintendo, with Mega Man X, Mega Man X2, all the Star Wars games, all in the boxes. Mm. Like, practically brand new, and a Sega Genesis with no games. And I said, I'll give you 50 bucks. And he said, okay. And I still. That's the dude. Oh, there he is, the kissing booth. That's the dude that's in. Euphoria. Euphoria. And he's not. Do he's... you see his penis? Is he one of the guys that like her? Uh, I don't know. I was more surprised that I saw him in an interview, and he's like, 
Irish or something. He's not. He, he's Who's not, that guy in the middle? I love that face. Who's that accident? guy? That weird Some face. Some dumb dude. The kissing booth. Um, he's not in Euphoria. I don't care about him. So yeah, I made a lot of money off that. I ended up selling Mega Man X online for like a hundred dollars, and doubled my money. It was amazing. You're an amazing person, Juan. Well, I appreciate that, Matt. So are you. We've been through a lot. What's next on the old what is next? agenda? Well, um, we both saw Spider-Man. We did both see Spider-Man. And as you know... Finally the, a movie we've both seen. I <laughs> Spider-Man's your favorite superhero. He is. Remember when I asked you, like... Do you remember why? how mad I got it? And you? you got fucking pissed. I was pissed. so mad at you. I don't even know why. I was like, why? Well, because you didn't ask, like, so, hey, Juan, <laughs> I'm gonna do a re- I'm gonna do a reenactment. This is how this right. is how this this is how it went down. Yeah. You said, hey, Juan, this is this is how <laughs> you probably thought it sounded. Hey, Juan, so why do you like Spider Man so much? It wasn't that. It was like, Juan, why the fuck do you like that piece of shit Spider Man? He's a I definitely asshole. was like that. And I was like, and I, I explained agree. it to you, and you're like, well, that's just dumb. You're dumb. <laughs> and okay, I think, I remember, fair, I remember at the exactly. time, this was before, like, Marvel movies and all this shit. I didn't give a fuck about any superhero whatsoever. So you care more about Spider-Man now after the movies? What about the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies? Spider-Man 2? Uh, you didn't dig Spider-Man 2? It was fine. Wow. They were campy and weird. Well, I mean. I mean, I liked them just fine. But I didn't like, 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 like them. Honestly, as much as I love comics and love Spider-Man, the first Spider-Man movie, which I'm in. Oh, yeah, you are in. I'm in that. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I I always forget about that. I'm in there. Your face is there. It's it's there for half a second. Uh, I I was so super, like, stoked to see that movie and just so excited. I didn't love it as much as I thought. It, it, It let me down a little bit. Spider-Man wasn't funny. He wasn't. It wasn't as fun and funny as he should have been. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know any better. Oh, so Green Goblin looked like the Green Power Ranger. It looked his costume looked yeah. horrible. I remember. This is my memories of the Spider-Man movies. I saw the first one kind of begrudgingly because I just didn't <laughs> give a shit. Fuck it, I'll see. Like it. a bunch Jesus of people Christ. were seeing. It, I was like, yeah, I guess I'll see it. And I thought it was fine. I had no interest really in seeing the second one, but then. It was like the midnight release, and I was just bored. And it tell was me, you playing. went to go see Spider-Man Two by yourself at a midnight showing? No, I went with my girlfriend at the time because we were just we didn't have anything to do. And it's like, well, Spider-Man's playing. I guess we can just go see that. And it was a midnight showing. And it was fucking empty. The theater was empty. It was like us and like For three Spider-Man other people. No I kidding. was like really surprised, and I I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good movie. Spider-Man Two was great. It was really good. It's and then I was like. Relatively excited for Spider-Man Three, like huh. we went and bought, yeah. like we got like pre-release tickets, blah yeah. blah. Did the whole deal, and the movie kind of stuff. shit all over your face, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that movie. I remember shit. being like super pumped, like Venom's in this movie, like sweet Venom's cool. No, movie sucked. <laughs> I, I remember, I, I remember when I was on the set. <laughs> sounds so weird to say. When I was on the set of Spider-Man, the first Spider-Man movie, um, they put all the extras. It was probably like three hundred of us, and. They put us all in this big tent, and then two big buses pulled up, and there were more extras. And it was all these... <laughs> they got extras from, like, jail or something like that to be what? in the movie. <laughs> like, all these criminals. And <laughs> there were guards with... It was insane! So they had a, they put us all in these bleachers. And then during the time where they're... Um, I don't remember. If, I don't know if you remember Spider-Man pretty well, but there's a scene where there's they're having a World Unity Festival, mm-hmm. and Mary, uh, Macy Gray is playing. So we're all in. The, we're all watching her sing. <laughs> Macy Gray. So <laughs> <laughs> kids love Macy Gray. So they while they were setting up because it was we were there for a stunt. So they they were setting up the stunt, and it took like an hour or so to set it all back up. Mm-hmm. So they put us on these bleachers. And we're sitting on these bleachers, and they bring out a comedian. They do that on, like, talk shows. Yeah. Like, Tonight Show, they bring out somebody. Have you seen Crashing, the HBO, <laughs> the HBO show? No, not yet, but I want to. It's super to. good, and he uh, he gets a job doing that in one of, the, one of the episodes. Really? Oh, that's cool. See, that, 
I, I really want to see that show. Um, so they bring out a comedian comes out and he's saying all these really cheesy goofy jokes <laughs> and he's like oh so hey guys you guys like spider-man Ooh. <laughs> you know just real just real goofy that's so funny and he takes out a beach ball and i guess that's a thing with crowds i almost want to say that's a thing with white crowds where you bring a beach ball out and they all like keep it they hit it is that is that a common experience that you've experienced yeah. as a white man yeah white man i hate <laughs> beach ball <laughs> I'm on the beach, I'm hitting balls. I assume that stuff happens at like a Styx concert or something like that. Pretty much any gathering of people, like a beach ball is just a thing, like any concert. You go I to, would imagine, yeah. Beach, beach ball, balls, a couple of beach balls and you keep them in the couple air. A couple beach balls, you know, throw them in there, beach balls. Football games, you know, beach balls. Beach ball. Fuck beach balls. So they, <laughs> so they throw the beach ball, he throws it out, and then people are keeping it up in the air. And this one, he's an... <laughs> How do I say this politely? He is, he's obviously on some type of work release program. Um, he's like, mm. he, he was sitting there and he was just cussing and he was like, he was pushing people and he was being very violent. And the basketball, go, or the, not the basketball, but the ball goes near him and he takes out a knife. He had a knife on him. And he pops the balloon, or he pops the ball, <laughs> and it just goes, and he's like, yeah, fuck you, and he sits back down, he puts the knife away, and then it was, then that was the end of it, that, that was it. So then the comedian left, and we all sat there quietly for the next <laughs> hour and a half, and uh, I thought, no one's going to take this knife from this, from this man? No. Why would they? It's he, a knife. He, he had a, he had a weapon. It's I would imagine a, that's... This is what year was this? No, it, the, this was like, God, oh my God, this was like... If he did that nowadays, he'd be shot. This was like 2000. Yeah, if he did nowadays, he'd be shot and killed. So then eventually the comedian comes back out, and he's like, we got a big surprise for you guys. Come on down. They bring us down, and they're like, and then here we're going to bring out... It was basically the stuntman dressed in the costume, because they hadn't... There was no internet really back then. No one's taking pictures. So yeah, they you had to take... Like, there was no pictures and stuff, and they had to... Um, they haven't really released how Spider-Man the costume was going to look. So they brought him out, and everyone's like, oh, cool, yeah, and everyone's cheering. And they're like, all right, and here we have Green Goblin. And literally, I swear to you, the crowd's like, oh. <laughs> Ooh. It looked like garbage. Go, go, Power Rangers. It looked so bad. <sighs> this is, these are stories I've never heard from you, Juan. This is, uh, I feel like I've told you that story. I've st I stole two exciting. things off the set. What things? One was a water bottle. That had some NBC show that was on some the air. I don't remember what Toby it was. Tobey Maguire backwash. <laughs> I could sell that now. Good. And then uh, a World Unity, because um, they gave us all flags to, to wave <laughs> in the crowd. I had that somewhere. So that was my exciting time at on the set of Spider-Man. Now you saw the new Spider-Man. Tom Real quick, Holland. though, before we hop on this new Spider-Man, what do you think of Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man? Because I fucking hate him. People really do I hate him. Here, here's... don't like them. There's, a, there's like a line, right? And then one side of the line is Tobey Maguire, and one side of the line is, is, is Andrew Garfield. And Tom Holland is like perfectly right in the middle. It's like they... They were like, okay, well, Tommy Maguire was not funny, and he wasn't saying jokes, and he wasn't real witty and quippy. Not quippy. And they were like, okay, so we're going to double the fuck down on some quips. <laughs> and Andrew Garfield, it was, it was much. It was way too much. It was like, Jesus Christ, this guy's. I mean, it was too much. Way too much. I agree. I didn't hate him. I thought he was a little too cool for school. It's like, this is Peter Parker, but he was... He was a cool fucking dude. Skateboarding and shit. You don't skateboard unless you're really cool. Who skateboards anymore? Cool people do. He was like the original indie guy. We wouldn't guy. know. We're not cool. I don't skateboard. So I didn't I didn't I didn't hate him as much <clears throat> as other people did. So I part of the reason I love Tom Holland so much might be because I I soured on Tobey Maguire so hard and then Andrew Garfield just tanked Spider-Man for me like I hated I hated those movies. I do not like I them. I was super, super excited for... Homecoming? Oh, no, for um, 
Amazing Spider-Man. Because I thought is that the second one or the first one? That's the, that's Andrew Garfield. Yeah, but which you mean the first? I are, what are those movies called? Just is Amazing, Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man? 1, Amazing Spider-Man two. Oh, okay. I wasn't. Yeah, they didn't have any like <laughs> inter electro or anything like that. Oh yeah, Electro was in that movie. He was Jamie Fox, and Skrillex apparently just doing music through the whole thing and. Wow, I've totally watched the second one out of my head. <laughs> All I remember from the first one, really... Oh, wait, because what's-her-name dies in the second one. Mm-hmm. I remember that. In the first movie, I just remember... We saw that together. I know. we saw. I think we saw both of them together. I remember the first one when Lizard comes in, and he's, like, concocting stuff with beakers and shit. It looks so that's, ridiculous. And it looks so stupid. Like, that's, like, my only memory of the first one. I remember thinking the first time I saw Lizard was that he looked like a... Uh... A Goomba from the Super Mario movie, the Bob Hoskins one. Oh yeah, he he totally looks <laughs> like that. Uh, I felt like they had way too many plans to do with that movie, and the the plot was just a little convoluted for me. I, I mean, that's kind of what they did with the third Spider Man movie too. Was they just tried to do too much with one film? They tried to do too much. Just let it fucking breathe. Yeah, the part three was... I, I'll never... I mean, not even just too much, but there were just scenes like Tommy McGuire dancing in the street. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean... Emo Toby. Emo Toby. He There's a scene where he pushes his hair in front of his face. Yeah. That's... That has nothing to do... That's not even... That's not plot. That's just something... Wasn't Sandman, Green Goblin, and Venom all in that movie? Was Sandman the third one? Sandman was not... Yes, he was in the third one. I'm sorry. It was Sandman, Venom, and then Harry Osborn as the new guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, he kind of started off evil, and then, and then he became good. Um, that part three was just so bad. It was... It was embarrassing. I, I remember seeing that in the theater... And I remember seeing people's faces and throwing their hands in the air like, what the fuck is this? Then you were embarrassed because everyone knew that you... Everyone knew that I was a, a big Spider-Man fan. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, this is your fault, Juan. <laughs> you made this happen. This is your fault. You love Spider-Man so much, you made this shitty movie. Yes, part three sucked fucking balls. Amazing Spider-Man 2 with Electro. <sighs> There were scenes that I actually really loved. There were some really great looking shots in that movie. And they did calm down on the quipping. He was a little more funny and less annoying. But Electro, and then they try to squeeze in this whole Harry Osborn as Green Goblin. Like, here's a new character. Now they're a villain. And they had Norman Osborn in that and then he just he just dies near the end of the movie. Yeah. So I thought the Gwen Stacy death scene was was handled pretty well. I remember liking that. But other than that, I remember when I saw that in the theater, a guy started. No wait, I think it was like the third time I saw it or the second time. But in the uh, a guy started laughing during that scene because there's a part <laughs> where he goes completely quiet. Yeah. And I guess the guy was having a conversation with his friends, and they were like, oh. Ha, 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 ha. It was really annoying. I didn't. I didn't hate that movie as much as most people did because there were some decent scenes in it. But Andrew Garfield was just one cool, one cool ass motherfucker. They had so many plans. They were having a all kinds of a Spider-Man universe spin-offs. Oh yeah, wasn't there, was there supposed to be like a Sinister Six film? There was a Sinister Six Six film. There was a Silver Sable. Did that happen? Black Cat. Am I crazy? No. What happened? To that? I thought they were like filming that. No, they never started it. Oh, good. Since part two sucked so much, they decided to reboot it with Tom Holland, and then Marvel got like kind of the rights to it, and so we're better off this way. I think so. I love to, uh, Tom Holland. I think he's great. I think he's yeah, absolutely so, phenomenal. Yeah, going into like Homecoming, expectations low. Like I did not want. To, I didn't really care to see that movie, and then I just went and saw it like a few weeks after it came out, just on a whim, and I was like, oh. I really enjoyed that movie. I was impressed. 
What were some of the scenes that stood out to you the most in that movie? Uh, mainly just in general, the villain, how they handled him. That's Michael Keaton. Yeah, Michael Keaton. He was great. Just phenomenal. I like the interplay, like the 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 school, like him being in school. I think was and that was good. That's what and a like Spider-Man movie should be between like him and his classmates. And I mean, I don't. Maybe I'm really dumb, but I did not see Michael Keaton as being like that girl's dad. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. I was, I was, caught off bar, I was caught like, off whoa. That too. But that's a lot of the Spider-Man comics where it's just like, there's a name for it. There, there's a term for it in the comic book where that that's the kind of shit that happens to Peter Parker. They call it the old Parker luck, where it's like, <laughs> oh, I'm dating this girl. Guess what? He's a freaking supervillain who wants yeah. to murder me and knows who I am. Yeah. Type thing, and that that does happen in the comic book. Spider-Man should should be in high school. The first Sam Raimi movie, he graduated like what an hour and a half into the movie, he was graduated. If that, yeah, something like I that. I mean, no, he needs to be in high school. You need to see him in high school. He's still a fifteen-year-old kid, still trying to hang out with friends and be cool and press the girl and try to be a freaking superhero. That's why I like Tom Holland handles it perfectly. And the first Homecoming was. I think it did it really well. Really, really well. And this past one was just... This might have been one of the best... I... We're talking about Far From Home now? Yeah. It definitely... It, it might be the my, my absolute favorite Spider-Man movie of all time. All time? They can never top it? I mean, I don't I mean, think well, they could well, I mean, ever To be it. fair, what's the competition here? Spider-Man 2 was <laughs> really good. The same Raimi Spider-Man 2... It's, Doc Ock I mean, it's, was probably the it's best well-done movie. It's a good movie, movie, but I, I mean, I put home, Homecoming above it. Hands down, not even, I'm not questioning it. I did really enjoy it. Did it did give us the um, the iconic train scene that now has to be referenced in every Spider-Man media <laughs> thing ever, apparently. I did enjoy uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, shit. Fucking love that movie. In my mo- for my money, that's the best that's movie that came best out last, that, last that, year. That before, before um, away from. How do we not talk about Spider Verse? The movie's fucking fantastic. We haven't. We haven't talked about I it. I fucking love that movie. It was phenomenal, <laughs> and I, I'm. I was blown away, and I remember seeing the trailer because they released a trailer for it, a real short one, like almost a year before, and I remember thinking like I was so stoked for that. And that's surprising for them to do... That's another thing. Like, I wasn't. Like, some of the animation stuff from the early trailers, I was like, this looks fucking weird. I don't, I don't really like it. And right. then after one of the Marvel movies, they showed, like, kind of an extended clip, and I was like, all right, I'm getting more into it. But I didn't... I wasn't fully on board until, like, I was watching the movie. But you haven't read any Miles Morales. No. Yeah. I was excited because I know the stories are... It's... He's a solid character, and, and he's very likable, and it's... At this point, I'm trying to keep, like, my superhero focus on film. Because there's too much... Well, you're going to have a lot of time, because we're there's not going to have another... Too much in the comics. Superhero movie for a while. It's not true. They're already... What's the next one? They're filming Black Widow right now. Yeah, but I'm not... Are you... Are you... Are you? Re- it isn't know. it a prequel? I don't give a fuck about. I don't well, care about the prequel. Black Widow. I, I don't. Um. I mean, I don't know. That's the weird thing too. After Endgame, I was like, "Well, good. They it was a good capper. Now I can not care as much." But then seeing Spider Man, I was like, "Ah." <laughs> <laughs> and the ending. Yeah. It's spoiler like... alert! With with the with the the end credit scenes, it's like creates. So much more. Like, they could... And the, the fact... Okay. So, I'll ask you this. How... When I saw it, and when they, sh- when they showed uh, Jonah, and it was um, the original actor from the Sam Raimi movies, back as Jameson. Yeah. What the fuck? Um, I'm forgetting his name. The guy from Whiplash. The guy from Whiplash. Uh, I mean, Commissioner the guy Gordon. from everything. The fuck's his name? Um, I love him. Burn After Reading. I believe he was in that. Um, um, Portal 2. Damn it, what the hell is his name? It's going to drive me nuts. But the fact that they brought him back, I jumped out of my seat and said, oh shit, when I saw him, because I think he's definitely the best. J.K. Simmons. J.K. Simmons. 
Yeah, no. That, and they got him as like awesome. this kind of Alex Jones type character. Did you play the Spider Man video game? Oh yeah. I beat the hell out of it. The he's kind of that character yeah. where he's like a weird conspiracy theorist podcast person. Yeah. I mean it looks like he was more news whatever, but yeah, just like a big conspiracy theorist. So that that opens up so much more. Now, do you think Mysterio is dead? A lot of people think. No, I hope not. I don't think he's dead. I don't want him to be dead. Right. But I'm. I mean, I don't know. I I try not to dwell on stuff like that. Like I. I almost brought up something from Stranger Things, but I won't. No, oh. don't. I haven't started Stranger <laughs> Things. Please don't ruin that for me. I'm not going to theorize about it too hard, but I don't want him to be dead. I hope he's not dead. Right. He killed it. Yeah, he he was he was awesome in that. I that whole movie was just amazing. That movie flew by, and th- these new movies are sticking so closely to the Spider-Man mythos. Like they're getting everything right. It's like there's a checklist. Spider sense check. There's high school, drama, check. Spidey Tingle. Spidey Peter Tingle. Tingle. Peter Tingle, check. And I, I love that they're doing all of this. And they and they're the one thing that's a little weird to me now in both films, both I mean it's kind of interesting, but also like I don't know how they're gonna keep going with it. Both the villains were created from Tony's like Yeah like, like arrogance. I think they're just trying to connect it into the into the Marvel universe. Yeah. But yeah, they they both are and actually I just I watched um Kevin Smith's uh review of it. He talks about it for like an hour and forty five minutes. He talks about Spider Man too. And he mentions that too, how it's just all these characters. Like it basically whether well, like there's at least two to three characters in this recent Spider Man movie that are a callback to, to Tony Stark. Yeah. With the barf technology mm-hmm. and uh the um the the one dude I'm forgetting his name the guy who was in the original Iron Man who gets yelled at Tony Stark built this in a cave yeah <laughs> gets yelled at by uh the fuck the Big Lebowski the Big Lebowski yeah Big Heart Iron Heart what's his name <laughs> Iron Heart yeah, Iron why Heart. we forget all that all these people's names he was in Tron <laughs> he was in Tron <laughs> he was in a million things. He is in a million things. Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges. Jesus Christ. Okay. Jeff Bridges. <laughs> Jeff, if you're listening, I'm sorry we forgot your name for a little bit. We love you, Jeff. We love you, We Jeff. know you're a big fan of everything we've done. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in and, and keeping this podcast strong. Like, yes. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the villains do seem to hark back to um, Tony Stark. Um but so far, we could be closer to a possible Sinister Six uh, tie-in or a movie because we got you already got uh, Vulture, you got Scorpion, you got you got Shocker, and you got Mysterio. And I heard recently they already casted somebody to be uh, um, Norman Osborn. So there's your Green Goblin. Oh shit. Is that the what governor you think they're from gonna go the for Walking the, the Dead. Third one? I'm sorry. Is that where you think they're going to go for the third one? Oh, the wait, the governor? Yeah. He's a British. We're not actor. talking about Negan. No, yeah, not Negan. No. Who the fuck is the governor in The Walking Dead? That's over, by the way. Yeah, and I. I so was the comic. That's what I mean. Well, the show's not over. The comic is. Oh, I thought the show was over by now. Jesus, no, how far? How I'm far? Who's left there. on that show? <laughs> um. Man, I stopped watching that show so long ago. Yeah. I stopped watching that show the same time I stopped reading the at the same part of the storyline of um of the comic book. But the comic book, yeah, just ended. And I hear it it's pretty good. Um, but I'm forgetting the actor's name. I don't know, I can picture him in my head. But he hopefully will play and I thought the guy that they got to play Norman Osborne in the original in the uh, Amazing Spider movies was really good. They got um Oh, what's his name? He was in American Beauty. Um Kevin Spacey? No. Um No, oh, hold on, let me look. Uh, Chris Cooper. 
Chris Cooper. Chris Cooper. He was in. Uh, let's see. What else was he in? Adaptation, American Beauty, Sea Biscuit. <laughs> Good old Sea Biscuit. Love Sea Biscuit. Uh, oh, he was in the town. Um, Chris Cooper. He was. He was uh, Norman Osborn in. In those in the Maiden Spider Man movies. Oh, this guy. Yeah. And I thought he would have been great. Like I think he would have been awesome. Why am I getting ads for your name? My movie's been out for like two years. So there's a lot of potential with the Andes. And also the other the other um end credit scene with the squirrels. With Sam Jackson being in um in Oh, space. I thought you said squirrels. I was like Squirrels? What? What do the squirrels. squirrels do? The squirrels. The squirrels in this movie? There's a bunch of them. The squirrels. Um, the squirrels. That caught me by surprise. I too. didn't really know like what that scene was alluding to, so I actually looked it up. But apparently, it could, it's alluding to like possibly sword. I didn't know there was a sword organization. It's kind of goofy. I'm gonna have to look into that because I'm not 100 shield. to know what that is. I've heard of it, but I, 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 I. There was another possible organization that had to do with like the Eternals too, but I can't. Or something. That's the next uh, phase for the Marvel Universe, so, the Eternals. Yeah, I don't know. They like which I'm like lukewarm on because it's. I don't know very much about them, but I'm just, I'm just hoping eventually they want to add X Men and the Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom and Galactus. Galactus, X Men. Do you see Dark Phoenix? No. I almost did, but I chose because I had a free ticket for my birthday to see a movie. But I chose to see Godzilla instead. Good. But I hear Dark, Fe Dark Venus is uh, pretty horrible. Uh, They've been pretty. I mean, those movies lately. have been bad for a long time. I mean, Logan was good, but that Logan was phenomenal. Hardly counts. <laughs> but I, yeah, I was gonna say like that doesn't even. I don't. I don't even think that's canon. To be honest, I feel like that like, takes a place in an alternate universe. Because there was f first class, which I. We We're, saw first class. I was actually you really, dug it. No, I didn't. I thought you dug I it. I was excited for it and I hated it. Well, I didn't hate it. I just thought it was it was bad. I don't know. I wanted to like it more. Um, the one I hated that everyone seemed to love was like Days of Future Past. You didn't like Days of movie Future was Past? Fucking terrible. Well, tell me why. I don't remember. Okay, so it wasn't but, that terrible. No, it was terrible. Because I saw it twice. Why would you say? All right. So I you're saw it with me. you and I saw it with someone else because they wanted to go. So you're telling it's me terrible. You saw a movie that you think is terrible twice. Why is that even weird to you? Because why would you see a movie that's terrible? I mean... You watch bad movies all the time. Yeah, but those are bad, fun <laughs> movies. I can sit down and watch The Room a thousand times. Days of Future Past is fucking terrible. I thought it was a good movie. It, it was terrible. I thought it was really good. I didn't even watch any of I didn't, didn't watch any movies after that. You didn't watch Apocalypse? No. Nope. Apocalypse was, like, laughably funny. Um, I think after Apocalypse, it's just Dark Phoenix. Yeah, Apocalypse um, was pretty bad. It sucks because they introduced, um, they got Storm and all these. It was like, oh, it was it was just, it was bad. I was really disappointed. And I'm hearing like Dark Phoenix was like even worse. It's like the worst one of all of them. Yeah. That's what I hear. You didn't see Dark Phoenix. No, because I hated Days of Future Past. <laughs> Did you see Glass? No. You didn't see Glass? No. There was like four months I didn't see any movies. I would suggest seeing Glass because really I would love why. to hear your. <laughs> I would love to hear your opinion on Glass. I saw Toy Story Four, which I have not seen. Which is really good. See Godzilla. What did you think of um, MJ and Peter's relationship in Far From Home? I thought it was great. And they, they did a perfect um, high school type relationship where they're both awkward, and they had that that my one of my favorite parts of that movie was when they had that awkward kiss on the bridge. It was like they're both. It's the first. I'm assuming it's the first kiss for both of them, which was awesome. You don't know. Maybe they both get around. Maybe they do. 
I don't think Tom Holland does. Maybe Peter MJ Parker. does. So uh, the weird thing about that, not to bring up Euphoria again, but uh, Zendaya, whatever. Yes, right, she's in that. And she's I hear she's, in she's Zendaya. She's getting praised for that. And she is a, like, drugged out high school kid doing a bunch of weird fucked up shit, and her, she's really fucked up in general, just in that show. And then coming to this, and, like, the most wholesome high school romance thing ever, <laughs> I was like, this is kind of weird, but all right. <laughs> I, I, I remember before the movie came out, I remember hearing the reviews and, like, um, people talk about her, her show and that it's, like, so out there and crazy for her to do. It is a little bit. And I, I didn't want to watch it before I saw Spider-Man because I don't want it to be ruined for me. I mean, it's not ruined. Spider-Man's still good. Now, what do you think of Lunt and May? Is she... Marissa Tell May? Well, I mean, like... There's this my only criticism of it is that they're really making Aunt May to be like like did her and Happy fuck because Happy's really in love with her. I think they did fuck, yeah. So Aunt May is just out fucking random just did she fuck Tony Stark? No. Why would she have fucked Tony Stark? Because uh he was at her house and then Peter Parker walks in and they're already there. No. I don't know. Why would why would, Why would she Tony fuck... was with Pepper. Oh, yeah. You know what? You're right. That's true. <laughs> I mean, at no point there. <laughs> that even crossed my mind. <laughs> Although Aunt May is way hotter than Pepper. True. Ten times hotter. What was um, that wrestling movie she was in? The Wrestler? The Wrestler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hot as shit in that movie. Yeah, she's naked in that quite a bit. She plays a stripper. That's actually a really good movie. It is a really good movie. That's definitely another downer movie, but it's a really good movie. I'm trying to think if there's anything else about Spider-Man that... That that was my only... Only criticism. Is MJ is, like, w- awkward, nerdy? No, in she's... In the comics, is she... In, in the, the comic, it started off with... Um, Peter, it was... Um, aunt May was friends with Mary Jane's aunt. And she kept wanting Peter to meet this... Uh, meet this girl. And so... Peter's like, oh, what do you, you know, kind of like, oh, great, I don't want to be set up. She's probably ugly and a nerd and stuff like that. So it went, and you never got to see what Mary Jane looked like, so it went on for a lot of issues. And then eventually, um, there was one issue where you don't actually get to see Mary Jane, and then Aunt May was trying to introduce him, but Peter had to run off to be Spider-Man. So they never actually got to meet. And also you see a woman in the shadows talking to Aunt May, saying... Well, maybe next time. Maybe I'll meet him next time. So then eventually they meet. Um, and then she says her famous line. Uh, you've just... Uh, what was it? Shoot. Um, face it, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot. Because then it's like this full... Almost like a splash page of her standing in the doorway. Looking hot. She was always like... Who a, says she, face it, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot. That's what Mary Jane says. To Peter? Yeah. Before she's even like... Yeah. She was like a party home. girl. Oh, weird. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> Super weird. Very weird. But nope, she and they eventually fell in love and got married and had kids and alternate universes. and Alternate universe. But no, she was never this awkward girl who was like, yeah. Almost emo. Wasn't she kind of emo in the movie at the very beginning of the last movie? Yeah, because I remember I was, she was reading one book, and I'm forgetting what it was. I don't, re- I don't, I don't really read her as emo as much as she just likes weird, disturbing facts about things. I don't really count that as emo. That's true. So I'm holding my hands. Trust uh, me, I know. <laughs> you, you know emo. <laughs> um, uh, a reprint of the first issue that introduced Mysterio. And I want you to read that part right there. Just this from over here. Matt's gonna read it for everyone to hear. Even this middle part? Yes, please. That's that's We've done it. We've created the greatest villain of all for old Spidey. That was a weird sentence that I did not make sense of. I was <laughs> like villain of, I thought they were gonna go for like an all time sort of thing, but we've created the greatest villain of all for old Spidey. Mysterio. <laughs> There's more. Who or what 
is he? <laughs> what? The what's italicized in white bold. Yes, it is. I don't know if you guys and have then what seen do you, can you describe white that picture? bold. Spider-Man's doing a weird dance and shooting he's out not, like a weird dancing. A webbing He looks net. a little awkward. He does look a little he's awkward. He's like breakdancing. He's breakdancing. And then that Mysterio was standing in some like clouds like holding out his hand. He looks like a fish man. He's got his ball on his head. So he looks like a fish. Yeah, it is. He looks like a fish. That was Mysterio's first appearance. Was that what they were going for, the fish thing? I don't know what they were going for. I, I think they were just going for weird. I just kind of put really that unique. together. But his costume was really unique. He's got eyes on his shoulders. Well, eyes on the shoulder. One of my favorite parts of the new <laughs> one of my favorite parts of the new movie is that Spidey has to rely on his spider sense to see through his illusions. So they have that one little montage where he's jumping out, and killing all the drones. Kill and that's probably one of my favorite parts. Kill all the drones. Kill the drones. But his but his it's a good band tingle name. didn't work for a while, so it didn't work. Well, I think. The Menace of Mysterio. Maybe he was still uh, developing his powers or learning how to use his powers. He's still young. What is he? They actually say he's 16. Yeah. They do. He's in high school. He's in high school. It's really weird to me. Hey, on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> these old comics, like the background art. There's so nothing in the background. There's, oh, yeah. It's, there's nothing. They, there's nothing this there. probably took like maybe 20 minutes to draw. It's very strange. Like These... these Cityscape right here. Like, yep, there's a little there's a little panel of a cityscape, and it's just some buildings, and there's nothing in between the buildings. Ugly women. Oh, well, that's just sexes. Is that Peter Parker? That is Peter Parker. What a Holy nerd, right? Shit, he looks like Brock Hampson. What? Who? <laughs> he looks like a Brock. Someone <laughs> needs to be beat up. He'd be a villain, and like nowadays, if he would be a villain in a Peter Parker. He probably setting. Would. Yeah, he probably would be. How long have we been talking? I feel like we've been talking for a while. Uh, I, I don't know. I was trying to make sense of the timings on your garage band thing, but I don't really see why. Yeah, I'm... it's kind of weird, but I had a, we've been talking well over an hour. I think this is a good stop. Okay. Besides, this thing is killing my ear. It, yeah, my ear hurts a lot. So, uh, <laughs> thank you for listening, anybody who did listen, and uh, hopefully we'll we do love more you. of these. We'll do more. Matt, do you have any closing we'll make, words you want we'll to say make, um, to the people out there? Make a more of an effort to have seen the same movies. Yes, time. let's do that. Uh, maybe we'll do another one after we see uh, uh, Midsummer. Yeah. Let's get you. Let's get you out to. Maybe we'll see Child's Play. I love. I would love to hear what you think of that. Yeah, I'll see Child's Play. You'll see Midsummer. We'll come back talk about him. That sounds good. Bye. Peace. <laughs>